Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our knees. Happy birthday to you. Welcome to our Arnie's Birthday Zoom with Kip Jones, a uh, Boilermaker standout from 1986 to 1989, I believe that's right, Indiana Mr. Basketball, or not Indiana Mr. Basketball, but Indiana All-Star, I should say, but you also were a very accomplished high go. school player and uh, had a great career at Purdue, part of two Big Ten championship teams uh, as well in your sophomore and junior years and made, uh, what, three three trips to the uh, NCAA tournament as well. Kip, uh, you're not uh, – 56 is a good age, and happy birthday to you. We're actually recording a day early, so this is the completion of his 56th year. But, Kip, uh, happy birthday to you, and welcome to our birthday Zoom. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate uh, you getting in touch with me. Um, look forward to talking with you, and uh, – you know, it's been, as I, as I said a minute ago, it's been a long time. It's good seeing you again. Congratulations on Golden Black and everything you do for the Purdue basketball program. Well, it's fun to do, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the about the about some of the NCAA experiences and only KIPP experience, but also take that into today's time. But let's. I always ask the question about what your birthdays were like growing up. Uh, you were from Decatur, Indiana. I remember going there to your high school when you were uh, at Purdue. We played a couple preseason uh, scrimmages there, at least one that I recall. But t- talk about that and what your family life was growing up and what birthdays were like uh, probably at, at the tail end of your basketball season most of the time. But uh, tell me what that was like uh, growing up uh, with a March 20th birthday. Well, you know, I, I think the thing that I always enjoyed the most uh, around this time is it seems like there's like right now the sun's out, you know, yeah. it's spring's coming coming around. And I always, you know, enjoyed the outdoors and so forth. So on a day like this, typically at, uh, on the Purdue campus, I would have been standing out in front of the house, probably just uh, admiring how beautiful it is out right now. But uh, yeah. growing up, you know, I had pretty good family life. We always celebrated. Uh, I have a brother and a sister. Uh, my brother is two years younger than me. My sister is seven years uh, younger than me. Um, and, uh, you know, we just always got together and kind of did the normal thing. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite things now is every year my wife makes, uh, I found out later in life that I love carrot cake. And uh, uh. my wife makes the best carrot cake out there and she makes it from scratch. Every year I got to hear that there's uh, six cups of shredded uh, carrots in the carrot cake that I'm getting. So <laughs> there you uh, go. it's a good thing. Yeah. Well, that's why you're healthy and you're, and you're and, uh, all those kinds of good thing when you're when you're eating those carrots. And uh, <laughs> I can only imagine how good yeah, your right. eye, your eyesight is. All right. When you're playing career so Purdue. Good. Yeah. <laughs> when you played at uh, Purdue, you came in uh, with a very talented group, uh, got to play a lot as a, even as a freshman, you and Melvin McCants in the same class. Troy Todd and Everett were a year older as well talk about just your your reflections or maybe any recruiting stories or how you got to Purdue you were obviously a well-regarded Indiana uh basketball player state of Indiana basketball player but talk about your road to Purdue and how that uh, how that came to pass back in the uh, uh mid-1980s well coach Weber was kind of at the forefront with re- recruiting me and uh you know coach would call me about once a week or so and just check in you know how coach Weber's really laid back yeah. And he was the same way, just kind of a nice guy, um, no pressure, just 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 was always there. And yeah. I think as a recruiter, I think that's what kids really want. I spent uh, five years at IPFW. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you go to every game, you watch the kid, and you're just kind of hanging out and watch them. It's a little bit different now with the AU ball, but back then they actually had to come to the high school games and uh, see you play then. And, you know, Coach Weber always showed interest, and then Coach Katie came to a few games. And um, just the fact uh, with the tradition that Purdue has always had, uh, had me excited. You know, I could watch the games on TV. Back then, it was kind of hit and miss on the games that you could see. Um, but, you know, Purdue with the uh, dark bleachers with the lights turned off and so yeah. forth. I remember watching them uh, on TV there. Uh, but Purdue showed, um, even though I was highly recruited, I still wanted to stay close to home. And Purdue was about two, two and a half hours from Fort Wayne. Um, um, you know, I was actually open to IU and uh, Coach Knight called every year uh, just one time 
he called my coach, say, is Kip interested in coming from probably my sophomore year on? Is Kip yeah. interested in coming to IU? And, you know, the other coaches uh, were calling me. They were kind of, you know, reaching out a little bit. And, and I just felt like, you know what, Coach Knight, if you want me to come there, you need to kiss my butt just a little bit. <laughs> and I'll come there. Then you, can, then you can treat me like crap when I get there. But uh, you know, that, that, that wasn't where he was at that time. You know, it seemed like he had kids kind of begging to come there. And um, I just like the whole demeanor of uh, the Purdue basketball family, the program. Once I got to know him, uh, I went to camps, camped there a couple years in a row. And, you know, it just it just felt good to me. I mean, and that's I, you know, a lot of kids, they, they, they talk about, you know, why they go here and why they I think more than anything, it's it's a feeling. It just feels right. And when it feels right, you know, you say yes. And I believe I was uh, one of the earliest commits uh, to yeah, Purdue. Yeah, um, as, as, as early as I did commit and I'm kind of the same way in life. Uh, once I know I want to do something, I just kind of make up my mind and, and decide, Hey, this is it. And once I knew that Purdue was a place, um, I didn't feel like I needed to do what Melvin did and go to Hawaii <laughs> just to visit yeah. or, uh, see what's going on in Hawaii. So I just kind of committed. I probably should have, I should have visited four or five places first before I finally committed, but I wasn't that smart. Yeah, that's right. The great story about Melvin McCants and uh, it is, I don't know if he committed to Hawaii, but he at least went out there for a visit to, maybe he was smart from that standpoint. I don't he know. was very smart. Absolutely. Very, and, and, and a terrific basketball player. You guys had it to had yeah. it going on. Gene Kenny was not, and as I was working in the athletic department when you started, not easy on you or anybody really. And for, he was a tough love type of coach. What did you, uh, what did you take, uh, uh, from that situation and, and learning from uh, what the lessons from a, like I said, a tough love basketball coach, it wasn't easy to be a pretty basketball player, especially with all those expectations. Uh, you know, you were there to, you were there in a situation where, you know, things were ramping up. I think the year would have been your junior year in high school. They won the big 10 championship uh, as part of that with uh, Jim Rowinski and company, but talk about that experience and what that meant to you. Well, you know, Coach has such a strong personality, yeah. um, and, and it's funny to see the clips on him on TV every once yeah. in a while when they go to him on a missed free throw or something like that. It's always yeah. fun to see that. It takes you right back. But his personality was so strong, and um, the bottom line was he laid down a work ethic for us, and he showed us what it took to be successful. Yeah. And, um, you know, every day – I, I guarantee you, and I've said this before, there's not another team in the nation that uh, practiced as hard and probably yeah. not as long as we did for those, yeah. you know, at one point we were 27 and two and we were still going three hours a day. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, when you have that kind of uh, leadership and work ethic, there's no doubt you're going to win your 18 to 24, 25 games every year, you know, on average. So um, it just makes sense, you know. Uh, the other thing was, you know, with coach being such a great person um, and you just knew that um, he strived to do things right and do them the correct way. And um, it showed in the players that he recruited and it's kind of been passed on to Matt Painter. Matt Painter does a great job recruiting just really good kids that don't expect anything, you know, except for, you know, like Coach Katie used to say, you're getting an education and a pair of sneakers when you come to Purdue. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, most of us kids, you know, you know, I look at first and Gillis and you see those guys and they're me. They're, they're yeah. who I was back then, yeah. I, you know, personality wise, work ethic wise. Um, you know, we're all different. But when it comes right down to the game, they want what's best for the team. They want to win. They're not happy unless the team wins, irregardless with how much playing time they get. And, and I kind of came in the same way, you know, with the, the accolades that I did have. And uh, kind of share with you because it's it's kind of funny. Um, the way I ended up being a McDonald's All American, you know, yeah. was um, I played at uh, Marion, and there was nobody selected yet to be on the McDonald's All American team. And Coach Green was the McDonald's coach that year, and I happened to have four. I had forty three points against uh, <laughs> uh, um, both Jay and Lyndon Jones and that whole yeah. group that they had that won the state championship three times in a row. And he just kind of grabbed me by the collar and said, hey, you're going to be a McDonald's All-Americans. So I don't know if it was a good thing to get labeled with that going into Purdue, you know, because I didn't have that kind of career. 
But what I did have was a career in which Coach Katie told me to do something and I did it. And I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the mentality to say, you know what, this isn't working out for me personally. You know, like, uh, I guess, a Larry Bird or a Palombizio or those kind of guys <laughs> to just say, you know what, I'm going to go someplace else. And uh, I just, uh, and I've always been that way. Again, I just fought through it. I had a great group group of guys around me. And it was just, you know, when I look back on it, um, you know, I loved playing with those guys and that team and that coach. Yeah, you're part of the trivia question. Russell Cross, Kip Jones. Uh, I don't even think Troy Lewis was a was not a McDonald's nope. All-American. Glenn nope. Robinson was. Of course, Mike Robinson was. Uh, nope. There haven't been very many in the history mm-hmm. of Purdue basketball. And uh, you didn't. You had a you had an extremely good career and had and played a huge role in 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 a couple teams that are still all time. Uh, favorites the 87 and 88 teams your sophomore and junior Mm -hmm. year talk about that because you were broke into the starting lineup Uh, you were not Troy Todd and Everett that was a that was a group of guys that were in the same class and of course you and Melvin uh, had a chance to 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 play in that uh, lineup but talk about what you learned about playing with those guys and also the camaraderie you had even though you weren't recruited at the same time or they were a year older than you well you know they were just uh I came in expecting to be, have the same career as they were having. Yeah. You know, that's the mentality I had as an athlete. Um, it didn't work out that way, but you know, Troy, Todd and Everett, um, they fell into their roles perfectly. Yeah. Um, Melvin came in and, you know, he's a thousand point scorer. And I think he started about every game all four years. Yeah. yeah. And back then um, it, the game was a little bit different and then they needed a, uh, a little bit of a knucklehead power forward and <laughs> coach Cody kind of just flat out turned me into that. He knew, uh, he knew I didn't like to back down from people. He yeah. knew that I was going to give him everything he got, everything he asked for. And that kind of was at that time, a perfect fit for the things that Troy Todd ever, and even Melvin could do, you know, Melvin was pretty skilled really. When you think about it, he had a little turnaround J and he worked hard. He made his free throws. You know, he got some offensive rebounds. Um, and then I just found myself in the role of uh, kind of doing the dirty work and um, honestly took a liking to it. And I think that's why Coach liked to put me out on the floor as much as he did was just because he knew I was going to run through a brick wall for him. Yeah, you had your namesake, uh, Tony Jones, as well. The year was a year behind you, right, I believe. Is that right? Correct. Also a very tough-minded guy. Uh, yeah. and, and feisty as heck. And you were as well, as I recall, uh, in a good way, but, uh, that made for sure. a really interesting composition of a basketball team. Some of the feistier guys in some ways were yourself and Tony, and, and yet you needed that. Uh, I think, uh, Melvin would, could get lit up a little bit too, as I recall, <laughs> but, uh, uh, right. and, 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 and Troy Todd and Everett were competitors to say the least, but, uh, mm-hmm. You had a really great blend of guys from that standpoint. I mean, that uh, is that a takeaway now in terms of team dynamics and things you've experienced professionally. Uh, uh, you look at a, a talented group like that that was ranked in the top five in the country for a couple of years in a row. Uh, that was quite the experience. Well, yeah, and I can I can kind of go off on a tangent. This is kind of a yeah. story uh, that happened that kind of goes to uh, Purdue and the way we played under Coach Katie, uh, Glenn uh, Glenn Rice. I yeah. uh, ended up playing in an all-star game here in Fort Wayne. It was a Nancy Ream fundraiser. I don't know how he ended up playing because it was just in a small gym here in Fort Wayne, yeah. Indiana Tech. And I heard he was playing over there. And, you know, since I played against him in college and I ended up being a uh, cheering for him in the pros. And I was a Miami Heat fan at the time when he yeah. was there. So anyway, after the game, I was there with my wife and, um, you know, Glenn played. And I went down. I said to Glenn, I said, you know, this was probably 15 eh, probably yeah 15 years because he had retired so maybe 15 years after we were both out of Purdue yeah. and he was out of Michigan and I said to him I said hey Glenn I said you remember me he goes oh Kip and he recognized me right away which was kind of fun with my wife yeah. being there and so yeah yeah and he said yeah 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 and he goes Kip I got something to tell you and I said what's that he goes we hated playing against you guys yeah and I said why, <laughs> why, why do you say that he goes because you guys weren't um vertical you were horizontal yeah which basically meant we had a bunch of earth movers yeah <laughs> and when we set screens and we ran our motion offense 
And to me, that was one of the best compliments I've ever heard was the fact that, you know, okay, you guys. So again, they're saying you guys weren't the greatest athletes in the world from top to bottom, but you guys got after it and you were physical and you did those kinds of things. And I always uh, enjoyed, I enjoy thinking about that every once in a while to just say, you know what, you guys weren't vertical, you were horizontal. And we had, I think at the time, we probably had one of the best weightlifting programs in the nation. And yeah. I think Coach Katie was a little bit ahead of the other programs in doing that. Um, I don't know how much they were lifting weights, but I kind of feel like, you know, we, we were doing a lot of that. And along with practicing for three hours and when you're a freshman <laughs> going to training table and all that kind of stuff. But it just all makes you tough. And, you know, it made it, it made us successful. You know, the one thing that I'm super proud about is when you think about every guy that I played with, they've all been successful in their yeah. career. And, and the most important thing is you haven't had guys that have ended up in trouble. Yeah. You know, there's some other programs out there where guys graduate in 10 years, you're reading about them and there's really nobody um, that I played with that has had any trouble with the law or gambling or doing those kind of things. And, uh, you know, that makes me super proud of, again, you know, what we were taught at Purdue and um, what we took after Purdue and how we applied it. Yeah, you guys were the wonderful combination, very much like this year's team, in my view. And we'll talk about that in a second, but really good guys first. And mm -hmm. that was always your, you know, even for people like in my role, and I was, I think, working the athletic department time, you treated everybody well. You know, you had your fun, sure. and you, and, uh, but you treated people with respect, and you were a big deal. And, right. uh, you know, a big deal in terms of being nationally ranked and, you know, the days of Sports Illustrated and the early uh, ESPN, mm -hmm. the magazine, and all those kinds of things that went on. Uh, you got your share of hype, uh, but you always <laughs> had that ba that baseline thing from that standpoint. Now, I want to bring it bring us to 2023. Obviously, this year was a very successful regular season and a Big Ten <clears> tournament <throat> for a team that uh, uh, really overachieved in a lot of ways. I think everybody can agree with that. Uh, got to number one in the country and won the Big Ten championship by three, big, by three games, kind of like you guys did your junior year, won by sure. a number of games. Um, and then, of course, uh, Friday night happened, an extremely disappointing loss uh, to, to Fairleigh Dickinson. Shocking in a lot of ways. We're all kind of trying to deal with that, just to, in terms of how that all transpired. You guys got to the Sweet 16 in, in your junior year, a lot of expectations, got ahead Kansas State 10 to nothing and had that game kind of going well, but Mitch Richmond happened, things happened in that game, and it ended up being a disappointment. Talk about maybe what, how that experience molded you and maybe some things that this group moving forward, because just about everybody on paper is coming back next year and there'll be expectations next year. But if you were going to talk to them, what do you say to them in this situation based on what happened uh, back in 1988 to you? Well, I don't even know if it's just 1988. I mean, you know, I've had things. I, I was in manufacturing. I was bought out yeah. and downsized three times in a row, um, right. you know, about 12, 13 years ago. And it's just one of those things, you know, when you're doing things the right way, doing the best you can. Um, it's just believing that things are going to work out. Things happen for a reason. Um, you know, that's what I'd tell these guys. Um, coach painters doing things the right way. Assistant coaches are doing everything right. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line is when you think about that game, we didn't make outside shots. Yeah. And, and, you know, you mentioned, you know, you didn't, you felt like they were kind of flat. I don't know if I necessarily saw that um, when I was watching the game. That wasn't the first thing that popped out to me. It was just every time they said we're two for 21 or we're two for 23, yeah. we're two for 24, you know, from three. I mean, if you're doing that and then you're not able to get those offensive rebounds and we're turning the ball over, I mean, it's the it's the perfect, you know, mess. Uh, it's not going to happen. You're not going to win those games in the NCAA tournament. You're not going to win those games in the in the Big Ten. So I just think that as, you know, I listen to Matt talk a lot. And, yeah. and again, he recruits guys. He recruits guys that can shoot it. Yeah. He's not recruiting guys that can't shoot the ball. I mean, you've yeah. heard him say that. And yeah. the thing that I love about, about Matt is, you know, unlike with Coach Katie, Coach Katie had, you know, other scores on the team. So Kip didn't need to score. Go get a rebound. You don't need to shoot yeah. the ball, right? Yeah. Well, you never hear Matt say that. 
So that's the one thing I really love about Matt is the fact that he, Brandon Newman, struggled yeah. this year a lot. Couldn't make a three every once in a while. You know, miss. Hey, kept letting him shoot it. Ethan Morton, keep shooting it. To me, what was going to happen the way I saw this going into this NCAA tournament was Brandon was going to have the confidence. Ethan was going to knock down some shots. Um, the biggest thing about this team that made us a number one team in the nation was early on we had our power forwards hitting threes. Yeah. If you got power forwards, Gillis and first hitting threes, you're going to you're going to win the now you can win the national championship. And the bottom line, and it's not just those guys. I mean, everybody else was missing. The only one that had a good game was uh, uh, Lawyer. He's yeah. the only one that had a good game, right? As far as he, I think he was two for five. Everybody else, you couldn't make a three. And yeah. so the way they their game plan was, um, the way they were swarming Edie, it just wasn't going to happen. But as far as your question's concerned, you know, they're going to remember it. They're going to remember it. They're going to remember it forever. But all those guys are coming back. Don't know about Edie, yeah. but they still got a heck of a nucleus. Um my my advice is shoot a thousand shots a day, every single one of them. Yeah. You know, I know lawyer. That's how he got good. Was in, yeah. he when he was in high school, he shot a thousand shots every day, threes and so forth. With the way Matt lets them play and the way Matt lets them shoot, all of them, they need to shoot a thousand a day, and yeah. um, that will lead to something new, um, an opportunity to win the national championship. I believe the way Matt is. Working, um, I should say Coach Kaner, but the way Coach Painter's working, he's younger he than you. You can call you can call him Matt. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. But the way he recruits, you know, right after a game, I see he's uh, in Newcastle or he's 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 all over the state of Indiana. Right after a loss, he's going someplace. He's in his prime. He's as good now, and he's going to continue to get better and get a feel for his players and so forth. But, but, that, but the bottom line is he's getting players and he's getting really, really good players. I believe to the point where he stepped up a level mm -hmm. compared to players that Purdue has gotten across the board in the past. So, um, and, you know, one of the things I hear about is, uh, you know, how rigid he is in the fact that he doesn't change his philosophy. Well, we as Purdue have not changed our philosophy in the way we play the game. Well, Coach Katie was there 25 years. How many years Painter got? 17. So 18, 18 now, yeah. I mean, we're pushing 40 years. We're a man-to-man -man defensive team. So, and we win a lot of games playing straight up, yeah. man. So the fact that you got people saying, oh, he needs to do this and he needs to do this. I mean, not only were we number one in the nation for a large part of the season or top five all year, you know, at once people recognized yeah. us, we won the freaking Big Ten and we won the Big Ten tourney. Yes, the NCAAs were a disappointment. I kind of laid it out there, but Matt's on the right track. And you know what? I'm going to be a Purdue fan forever, even if they don't win a national championship. But that talent, it's Really to the point now, Matt knows what he's doing. His staff knows what he's doing. It's that talent, and it's being able to step up in big games and hit shots. That's yeah. that's where Purdue is right now. It's, he keeps recruiting better and better guys, and somehow you got to get guys that are going to be able to look at that situation, that moment, and make those shots. And um, I think that's right around the corner, honestly. I think he's right there. Yeah, well said. Motiv you know, you even talked about your own personal life and some of the things motivated by disappointment that can be that can be a thing that uh, that can change you. It's kind of it's kind of one of those deals where it's a choice. You've got to cho choose right. to put the work in, and, and uh, that seems uh, seems to me to be what you're saying. Absolutely, absolutely. You just you, you you keep fighting, you keep believing, and eventually good things will happen. Right. Even when yeah. bad things that you don't deserve happen to you. Yeah. You keep, if, you know, what's the, what's the alternative? You yeah. go the other way. That's yeah. not a good thing, right? So you, you just got to keep doing the best and keep trying, and eventually good things will happen if you live long All right. enough. All right. The world, according to Kip Jones, 56 years young, 
on uh, the 20th of March. And we thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I appreciate your message. It's not the happiest time, right, today for Purdue basketball, right. just because that's the nature of the NCAA tournament. I get that. And uh, we'll see how things go moving forward. But uh, hope you have a great day. I know you are an early morning worker. Tell folks what your what your little bit about your family, too, and what your day job is these days. You're getting up early in the morning. You're an early morning guy. But uh, tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll, we'll close it out. Well, I worked I worked uh, as a basketball coach for some years. I was at IPFW for a while yeah. and then uh, ended up uh, teaching for a while. Did that for five years. Had a headhunter call me, pulled me back into manufacturing. And now for four or five months now, I'm a manufacturing man- manager at Michelin. Uh, you might have some of those tires on your car right now. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, thanks so much, Kip, and have a great day tomorrow. And uh, we appreciate it so much and uh, pre- appreciate also your insight on Purdue basketball. You've lived it for a long, long time. And, that, uh, that, and uh, that, that's a good thing, though. That's a, it's yeah. about experience, and and uh, it, it, it's an important thing for Purdue fans to understand. So thanks again, and have a great birthday, my friend. All right. Take care.